الله أحمد رسول الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا All praise is due to Allah the creator of the universe I bear witness that la ilaha illallah and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasool. My brothers and my sisters, if one would like to count the great blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us, some of us will say it's our health. Others will say it's our wealth. And maybe some will say it's our education or the country we live in. But as Muslims, the greatest blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Islam. To be a Muslim and to understand Islam is the greatest blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave each one of us. My brothers and my sister, be proud, be happy, and be content that you are a Muslim. Because to be a Muslim and to understand Islam and to live Islam and to share Islam, you will be doing the best service to mankind and at only that particular moment you will be serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best possible way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes your mission and my mission and our mission in life. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah has created you for one thing, is to be in servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to be in service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to be in service to anyone else, not to be in service to your health or your wealth or your family or your job, although you can do the service for these specific things, but your final goal is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we as Muslims understand the meaning of Allahu ghayatuna. Allah is our objective. Allah is whom we serve. والرسول قدوتنا أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم is our example. Two important facts. الله غايتنا والرسول قدوتنا Allah is whom we serve and رسول الله the messenger of Allah is whom we take as an example. My brothers and my sisters, three characteristics are important for each Muslim to understand about Islam. The first most important characteristic that it's divine message. That Islam is divine. Islam is not man-made. Islam was not founded by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna ad-deena inda Allah al-Islam. The religion that is accepted in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Islam. And you as a Muslim, you need to be proud of accepting that particular religion. And remember, this is the first characteristic. Al-Quran al-Kareem, my brothers and my sisters. There is no other book, divine or otherwise, that can be similar to Al-Quran al-Kareem from the first word, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, until the last word, Anas. It's a divine message. Never change, not one word added to it, not one word taken from it. That is powerful. For the past 1400 years or more, Al-Quran al-Kareem is the eternal guidance, not only for Muslims, but for mankind. That is the first characteristic. The second characteristic is 
the comprehensiveness of Islam. Shumuliyatul Islam. Islam is a comprehensive way of life. The way you talk is Islam. The way you walk is Islam. The way you go to school, the way you teach, the way you learn, the way you bring up your family, the way you feed your children, the way you take care of your spouse, it's all Islam. Islam encompasses all your activities. Islam encompasses everything you do in life. And that is the second characteristic. The first characteristic is it is divine message from Allah to mankind. The second, that it is comprehensive. It is not limited to people sitting in the masjid. It is not limited to people doing worship here or there. It encompasses. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, جُعِلَتْ لِيَ الْأَرْضُ مَسْجِدًا The whole earth is a masjid for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and for the followers of Rasulullah. What does it mean? It means for you and me that we need to take Islam everywhere. Islam is not limited to the masjid. Islam is a way of life. And that's the beauty of Islam. Islam is not a religion. It's not an organized religion. Islam is a way of life. Islam is something to be lived. First, to be understood. Second, to be lived. Third, to be shared. The third characteristic, it's universal. Islam is a universal message. It's not limited to the Arabs. It's not even limited to the Muslims. It encompasses everyone. If we agree on these principles, let me share with you two verses of the Quran al Karim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the Ummah that believes in these three principles in two descriptions in the Quran al Karim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes your Ummah, my Ummah, the Muslim Ummah, with two descriptions. The two, dis the two descriptions are. كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ للناس. You've come to be the best ummah produced for mankind. That is very powerful. You, as a member of the ummah. Where is the ummah? The ummah exists everywhere. As a member of the ummah, you're supposed to be the best as an example. You're supposed to be the best in action because this whole ummah is, is produced to produce goodness. And the second ayah is, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَىٰ لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ You've come to be a wasati ummah. What does wasat mean? Wasat means ummah of justice. And this is the topic of my khutbah today. Your ummah is ummah of justice. And this is what makes the Muslim ummah a unique ummah. Now, you will say, you're saying to me now, justice? Are you sure that Islam talks about justice? My brothers and my sisters, Islam is nothing but justice. What is the days before Islam are called? They are called the days of Jahiliyyah. Before Islam came, the rich would enslave the poor. The men would enslave the women. The Arabs would enslave the blacks. That was the characteristic of the Jahili days before Islam. Islam came for justice. Islam came for justice, my brothers and my sisters. That's why Bilal, Sayyiduna Bilal, you know Bilal? Bilal was an African. He was nothing in the Arab world. He was nothing, literally nothing in Arabia. He became a Muslim, so he became Sayyiduna. He becomes our master is Bilal. That is the beauty of Islam. Islam does not know any discrimination, any form of racism, any form of injustice. And you as a Muslim, you're invited to live justice. You hear me? To live justice, to share justice. When there is injustice anywhere on the face of the earth, you as a Muslim, you're supposed to stand up for justice. Many of you will say, 
But why did the Muslim Ummah is not the best Ummah? Why the Muslim Ummah nowadays is not the best Ummah? In the khutbah, I will not be able to elaborate a lot. But I would like to invite you tonight. I will be speaking again tonight in the family night to answer this question or to try with you to answer the questions. Why is the Muslim Ummah backward? And why other nations are moving forward? What is the difference between a just Ummah and an unjust Ummah? But this khutbah, I will focus mainly on justice, the concept of justice. My brothers and my sisters, I went to South Africa and I prayed Salatul Jum'ah there. I prayed also Salatul Jum'ah in Malaysia. And I also prayed Salatul Jum'ah in Europe. Every khutbah I attend, and I believe you do the same here. What does, how does the khatib end his khutbah? Every khatib in the Muslim world, if not in the whole world nowadays, ends the khutbah with the following verse of the Quran. In Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa itai dhil qurba wa yanaha anil fahshai wal munkari wal bagh. Allah orders justice. Every khutbah. Everywhere I went, Allah enjoins justice. In Allah ya'muru bil adl. So you and me, my sister there and my brothers here, need to answer this question. What does justice mean for myself? As a Muslim, you need to be just in your relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to be just in your relationship to your physical being. You need to be just in your relationship to your spouse, your husband or your wife. You need to be just in relationship to your children. And your children need to be just to you. Your relationship between your neighbors, your relationship between people working with you, Every action you do has to be based on justice. And I would like to talk a little bit about this word of justice. But before I go on, let me share with you a couple of ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in the Quran al-Kareem that all messengers of Allah and all books sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent for one purpose only and that purpose is to establish justice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-hadid hadid surah ayah 25 please check it out for yourself when you go home tonight no tonight you can come here to the mask but maybe tomorrow you can check this with your family Say, let us, the Imam told us about verse 25 in Surah Al-Hadid, in the Surah about Ayr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلُنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنْزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانَ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ That Allah has sent messengers and messages بالبينات, by miracles. وَأَنزَلْنَا And Allah has also sent with the messengers two things. Knowledge and balance. Knowledge and balance. الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ Your one has to have the knowledge to be able to live a balanced life. So الْكِتَاب وَالْمِيزَانِ But why Allah? The question is, why Allah have you sent messengers with knowledge and balance? لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ so that people, and look at the Quranic word, it does not say Muslims, it says people. All people. As a Muslim, you have to be concerned about justice everywhere. And it does not matter whether injustice happens to Muslims or non-Muslims. You as a Muslim have to be concerned about justice everywhere on the face of the earth. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. 
Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu. And my brothers and my sisters. My brothers here and my sister there. Every time you hear Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu. While you're reading the Quran, and Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu. You have to stop. Say, oh, Allah is talking to me. I need to listen. I need to listen carefully. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu. كُونُوا قَوَّامِينَ لِلَّهِ Be standing up all the time for Allah. شُهَدَاءَ بِالْقِسْتِ Establishing قِسْت قِسْت is a Quranic word, means just. And you see the relationship between قِسْت and just. You will find them related to one another. Both in English and Quranic Arabic, قِسْت and just are related to one another. Allah is inviting you as a believer. You as a Muslim, as a believer, when you see injustice happens anywhere on the face of the earth and you don't care, you're part of the problem. You have to condemn any form of injustice. When I first came here, this is my first visit to you here and I'm so happy to meet all my brothers and my sisters. And I found the name of your masjid is the masjid of Salam. As Salam. And I remember in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, we used to say, when there is no justice, there is no peace. Peace has to be based on justice. My brothers and my sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا اِعْدِلُوا Never let the hatred to any people take you away from justice. Be just. Many, many times in the verses in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us to understand justice, to live justice, and to share justice. My brothers and my sisters, I know on some day, there is an important moment in Muslim history. It's called Al-Isra wa Al-Mi'raj. And you know, you love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can never be a Muslim if you don't love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But if you love Rasulullah, you need to do the work of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You cannot say, oh, I love you Rasulullah, but then I do opposite work. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ If you were really truly loving Allah, you need to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us talk about Rasulullah, our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All his message was a message of justice. Before salah, many people accepted Islam because of just justice it provided. Many people, and justice, complete justice, blind justice, justice for all, regardless whether you're rich or poor, white or black, it did not matter, Arab or non-Arab, justice for all, one size fits all, that is the justice that Islam worked for, that's why you and me, that's why when Muslims came to us in Egypt, I am from Egypt, I was born in Egypt, when Muslims came to us in Egypt, we loved Muslims. We accepted Islam. Why? Because it brought us justice. The only thing that we needed to enjoy the difference between a human being and subhuman is justice. If you live in justice, you're a full human being. But justice, my brothers and my sisters, cannot come to you free. There is nothing free. You have to pay a price to defend justice and to live in justice. Look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Working from day one for justice, for equality, for freedom for all. And then her uncle passed away. His uncle was his protector. Passed away. And then his wife, his beloved wife, passed away. So, and the people of Mecca, were giving hard time to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were not doing justice, but he didn't say, okay, okay. I will accept the status quo. I will submit to them. 
He said, no, never. That's why my brothers and my sister, if someone wants to become a Muslim, the first thing that person says, la ilaha illallah. There is no justice teaches us the ability to be able to say no to injustice. If we fail to say no to injustice, then we become part of the injustice that is being committed against us. Inna Allah la yuhibbu al-zalimin. Allah does not love those who are unjust. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam decides to go to Ta'if. A Ta'if was another district close to Mecca. What happened to him? The leaders of a Ta'if told the kids in the area, Oh, this man is coming to play with your minds. Let us throw stones at him. Can you imagine that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was thrown by stones until he started bleeding? Why? Because of his work for justice. Because he wanted them to understand the message of Islam. At that particular moment, Al-Isra wal-Mi'raj comes in place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and found him trying to do everything he could in his power so that the message of Islam can be spread to the rest of humanity. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam invited Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I will not spend a lot of time because you may have your own programs on Sunday about Isra and Mi'raj. But three important principles we need to know. So there is a surah in the Quran al kareem it's called Surah Al-Isra. Subhana alladhi asra bi'abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-akhsa alladhi barakna hawlahu lunuriyahu min ayatina. It's very important to understand as a Muslim the connection between the Masjid al-Haram in Mecca and the Masjid al-Aqsa in Jerusalem, in Palestine. And you cannot talk about justice while not talking about what happens in Palestine. If you have Palestinians among you, they've been suffering for decades. They've been suffering from injustice, not only Palestinians, but Syrians, Iraqis, Afghanis, Egyptians, just name it. So many people are suffering from injustice. As Muslims, it's very important to understand that the Masjid of Al-Aqsa, Al-Aqsa Mosque, is under occupation. And your responsibility as a Muslim to work as much as you can so that you can bring justice to the second most important holy place. So we have three places, Masjid al-Haram, al-Masjid al-Aqsa, and al-Masjid al-Nabawi. The third important point of al-Isra wal-Mi'raj is Salah. Salah came to be prescribed during that journey. We as Muslims, we need to pay special attention to Salah. And Salah, my brothers and my sisters, is not just that movement that we do it without the spirit behind it. This movement, that to, the fact that we're all coming together to make Salah, there is a meaning behind it. We have to have this social connectedness. We have to be socially connected with one another so that we understand the meaning of Salah. When we, we pray together, we understand the problems of Muslims. When we pray together, we figure out the challenges that are facing Muslims anywhere on the face of the earth. My brothers and my sisters, the stories about justice are many. I have four stories I will share with you after the break. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه. إن الحمد لله أحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره 
ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا. Today's khutbah, my brothers and my sisters, for those who came late, give a very brief summary. It was about the most important value in Islam. In fact, the opposite of the jahiliya days before Islam is the justice, the concept of justice that came with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Islam teaches us to be just, to live in a just society, and to share justice. And this is why we're coming to spend some time with you tonight. I need to see all of you and more others, those who could not make it to, for Salat al-Jum'ah, so that we can talk about the concept of justice and how can we live it in America. If any Muslim in America is having any problem with the justice system, please come tonight. If any Muslim would like to know what are your rights, what can you do, if any problem happens to you in the justice system, in the court system, in the prisons, or anything else, please come tonight. We have two speakers who will be able to address all these particular points. It's very important for the Muslim community to be active on this particular matter, especially the issue of justice that Islam calls for and considers it one of the most important values of Islam. When we talk about justice, we have to talk about Umar ibn al-Khattab. We cannot talk about justice without talking about Umar ibn al-Khattab. Caesar sent someone to check on Umar. Caesar with the counter, leader, he was in a fight with the Muslim Ummah. So the Roman person came to Medina and he asked the people of Medina, where is your king? Where is the palace of your king? The Muslims said, we don't have a king. We have an Amir. Amir al muminin And he said, where is he? Where is his palace? He said, he doesn't have a palace. The man was shocked. The man didn't believe. And they told him, look around, you may find him somewhere sitting next to a train. Then if, when he found him sitting there under a train, he said it so beautifully. He told him, Hakamta fa'adalta fa'aminta fa'nimta ya Umar. You ruled, you established justice, and that's why you are safe without guards, and that's why you sleep in tranquility. That is the beauty we need. I don't want to spend a lot of time on what happens in the Muslim world. You all know what happens in the Muslim world and the lack of injustice in the Muslim world. You, as a Muslim American, you have two responsibilities. One is to work for justice here and now. The other is to work for justice there and the Muslim world. You're from any particular country, you need to see, does your country apply justice? Support it. If your country does not apply justice, try to do the best you can so that you establish justice. You talk about justice, you have to talk about Umar radiallahu an. You know, in Egypt, again, there was a Coptic, Christian Egyptian, was racing horses with the son of the governor of Egypt, Ibn Amr ibn al-As. Then the Christian won the race. But the son of the governor didn't like it. So he slapped him on his face. The Christian said, why do you slap me on my face? I won the race. Don't you talk Muslims about justice? I will go to Amir al-Mu'mineen. I will go to Umar ibn al-Khattab because he trusted that justice will be served. So he went to Umar. What did Umar do? He said, sit here with us in the masjid. Told the Christian, Egyptian, to stay inside the masjid because of justice. And then he summoned or called the governor of Egypt and his son and told him to come here in front of me. And then called, when he came, told the Coptic Christian, slap him the same way as he slapped you. Allahu Akbar. Isn't that the real justice? Allahu Akbar. Slap him the same way 
he slapped you. And then called the governor, his father, and told the Christian, slap his father. Because if it is not for his father, he wouldn't have slapped you. Then the Christian said, oh, no, no, thank you. Thank you, Omar. Enough. One is enough. He slapped me. I slapped him. That is justice. I'm not going to slap his father. I will let his father go. That is the beauty of justice. My brothers and my sisters, Muslims, need to come back to be described as the best ummah. Kuntum khaira ummah. You've come to be the best ummah for mankind. It's not by how long is your beard. It's not how many times you pray. It's not by how much you do this or do that. It's how much you establish justice in your life. Justice in your relationship with Allah. Justice in your relationship with Rasulullah. Justice in relationship to your body. You have to establish justice to your physical being, your intellectual being, your social relation. You have to create a balance all the time. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا You've come to be a middle ummah, a wasati ummah, so that you become an example for mankind. My brothers and my sisters, be proud of being a Muslim. But to be a Muslim, you have to work for justice. You cannot say, I'm a Muslim. Okay, I say so many problems. What am I going to do? Allah will ask you. Wallahi, Allah will ask each, you, each and every one of you, us, what have you done? To Muslims in America or to Muslims all over the world. My brothers and my sisters, let us pray together. And I will be happy tonight, inshallah, to receive all your questions. Please, come so that we can talk. It's a good opportunity when you meet people coming from outside. Come, let us talk about how can we establish and institutionalize the concept of justice. This is what we need. We can do it here in America so that we can do it somewhere else in the Muslim world. We need justice to be served on the face of the earth. Oh Allah, oh Allah, empower us to live as Muslims. Oh Allah, empower us to live in justice. Oh Allah, empower us to defend justice. Oh Allah, empower us to relieve people from suffering. Oh Allah, empower us so that we can help people all over the world. اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وتولنا يا رب في من توليت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه My brothers and my sisters May Allah accept all our prayers, all our deeds As I said at the beginning of khutbah إن الله يأمر بالعدل الله إنجوين جاستس إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون بفرق قمة الصلاة